Hi, Kickstarter backers. This is Alan Emrick from Victory Point Games, and I am here with... Jeremy Leonard. I'm the designer of several board games for Victory Point, including Darkest Night and Gemrush. And Gemrush is what brings us here to you today, because we're working on an exciting new second edition of Gemrush. But, Jeremy, tell us about the first edition of Gemrush, and and why was that so successful a game, that we're doing a second edition? Well, Gemrush is a light game with uh, tile laying and set collection. You are building out a magical gem mine using the gem cards in your hand to construct new rooms and then using the rooms to acquire more cards. And um, how many players does this accommodate? It accommodates one to six players. Six players in the in the first edition game, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. And everybody is a dwarf. Yeah. Some of us are shorter than others though, so we're better at being dwarfs. It can be played either cooperatively or competitively, so you have a lot of options about how you want to interact with the other people at the table. So you could play solo. Yes, you could play solo using the cooperative rules. Or I suppose you could also play solo using the competitive rules, but you'd win a lot. That's for me. All right. Um, now, now we're working on a second edition. Can you can you give me a, what's new in the second edition? What's different about the second edition? Sure. In the second edition, we've added three new types of special gems you can use to help you with construction. Ooh. Uh, the Orihalcum, Echo Glass, and Warp Stone are all new gems. Or Halcom gives you extra points. The Echo Glass copies other gems, and the Warp Stone helps you move around the mine more easily. We've also added new room tiles and new skill cards that give the players different abilities to help them out. And um, more players. Yes, we've also increased the maximum player count to seven. That's got a nice symmetry because there's seven main types of gems in the game, and so now there's one dwarf for each of the seven gems. Uh, And speaking of gems, we changed the scoring tokens from cardboard chits to gemstones. These are not the finished product, um, but the gemstones are right here. And so you'll be scoring by going, ha 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 ha, me gems. All right, so that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, And the new art by Clark Miller. Clark Miller. Boy, he does a great job. He did your Darkest Night game and made that thing look really great. That's true. All right, so that is the introduction into Jim Rush. Let's learn how to play. So in Jim Rush, you are playing as a group of dwarves constructing a magical gem mine. You're going to have a dwarf piece that moves around in the mine, and you're going to have a hand of gem cards. On your turn, you can move up to three spaces and then do one action. If you move into a room that already exists, it's just a movement. If you move into a room that doesn't exist, then you have to build it. In order to build it, you're going to play gem cards from your hand that match the gems on the doorway that you're moving through. In this case, I'm moving through this doorway, so I need a black and a yellow gem. I'm not holding that in the right place. (laughs) I need a black and a yellow gem. Gem cards in your hand typically have two gems on them and can be used as either or both. So for example, I could use these two cards to pay for the black and the yellow. But if I have this card, I can play just a single card to cover both. Lucky guy. After I use that card, I take points as indicated on the doorway that I just built, draw a new room tile, and I can choose how to connect it to the doorway that I just moved through as long as I have one door pointing back the way that I came in. Constructing a new room doesn't end your turn, and you can construct multiple rooms in a single turn as long as you have enough movement points and enough cards. But whenever you're done moving around, you get to perform one action, which is usually how you get more cards. You can always choose to draw one card from the deck as your action, or you can choose to use the special ability printed on the room that you're standing in. In the Soul Stone Shaft, I can discard a card with a purple Soul Stone on it in order to reveal five cards from the deck and choose three to keep. Mm. So I can discard this purple gem, reveal five, and then choose three of them to add to my hand, Oh, nice! discarding the remaining cards. At the start of your next turn, though, if you have more than four cards in your hand, you have to discard down to only four. 
and you have to do that before you do anything else on your next turn. So you have everyone else's turn to think about which cards you want to keep, but you can only keep four. And you score points for going through these doors? You don't score points for walking through a door, but you score points every time you build a new room ah. by playing cards to match the symbols on a doorway that you move through. So that little one in the black hexagon, that's how many points you scored for building that's that right. room. That's right. Okay, excellent. There are several standard gems that you can use for building rooms. There's also four special gems that have additional rules. Diamond dust can be used in place of any of the standard gems, so it's like a wild. Echo glass can copy a standard gem that you use at the same time. So it's weaker than diamond, but diamond usually appears alone, whereas echo glass usually has another gem along with it. Aura Halcom doesn't help you build the rooms, but it gives you extra points for each Aura Halcom you can incorporate into the construction. And the game is about points? The game is about points. Okay. Um, and then Warp Stone allows you to move any distance without using up your regular movement points. You can use it as part of the construction in order to enter the construction space for free, oh. or you can use it when you're not constructing a room just to teleport somewhere in the mine. So. <clears throat> the game is about points. How do you win? Well, that depends on whether you're playing the cooperative mode or the competitive mode. Okay. In the competitive mode, you're going to wait until one player reaches a target number of points, typically 20. Then you finish out the rest of the round so that everyone has an equal number of turns and the player with the most points wins. If you're playing in the cooperative mode, then at the end of every turn, you have to permanently remove three cards from the game that don't get shuffled back in with the regular discards. Ah. And you're working together to try and score a certain number of points, depending on the difficulty level, before you run out of cards to play with. So the deck is the ticking clock. That's right. Ah. Now I notice that these guys are out here. What do those do? Those are skill cards. There's a bunch of different special abilities, and each player gets one at the start of the game that gives them uh, their own personal advantage or way of breaking the rules so that they can get an edge in the game. Excellent. Yeah, you don't want to take your pick into a mine without an edge. Ha! Huh. Huh. <clears throat> Sorry. And I just want to say that this is Alan Specialization. Emrick from Victory Point Game. And Jeremy is our resident bard, by the way. He wrote a poem for all of these powers. No matter what need the dungeon may ask, the jewel of your creed performs every task. Which is why my wild... Uh, yellow gems were wild for me. I had caffeination, which says, The spell running through you is simply the best. With potions to fuel you, you'll never need rest. Yay! We hope you enjoyed uh, this playthrough of Gem Rush 2 with us and hope you back this project because, hey, you're getting a great, fun game. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.